Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So now that we've seen all of the cars in Vivid Voltage, and we have talked about all of the cars in Vivid Voltage, no, that's not fair. Astonishing Volt Tackle, which will end up being Vivid Voltage over here. Although I'm still fairly sure we have talked about all the cards in Vivid Voltage. But we're talking Astonishing Volt Tackle here. We're talking the latest Japanese set. We've talked about all the cards. We need to talk about the best cards. We need to talk about which of these are going to end up being rather spiffing cards indeed. So let's have a gander, shall we? And we're going to start off with a couple of honourable mentions. First up for Zapdos. Now Zapdos, very interesting card. It's basically Cramorant V. It has got the same attack as Crammer and V, except it is only allowed to hit EX and GX Pokemon. It is not allowed to hit non-GX, non-V. But other than that, it's the same attack. Free energy, discard them all, 160 to one of your opponent's bench GX or V Pokemon. Expect Lightning decks to use this to take cheeky KOs on the bench. Speaking of cheeky Lightning cards that may well end up finding their way into decks, how about Electrode? Electro's got one of these abilities that knocks itself out, and yes, that does mean you're giving up a prize. But when you give up a prize, you get to search for two lightning energy and attach them to your lightning Pokemon in any way that you like. And bearing in mind you might be playing lots of two and three prize Pokemon, your Pikachu and Zekrom, your Boltun V, etc. Giving up one random single prize Pokemon might not be an issue in the least, it might not even get your opponent any closer to winning the game. So essentially, this seems like the kind of thing that Lightning decks are going to want to use to accelerate energy. So let's start off with a top 10 proper, and it's actually a top 11, and I'm sorry, I'm cheating a little bit. I could not cut it down to 10, and you can't make me. Although please don't stop watching, because then I'll be sad. What we've got at number 11 is Coating Metal Energy. And if you really insist on a top 10, this is the one that I would cut out. But it's very, very close. It's Weakness Guard Energy for Metal Pokemon. It is literally a Metal Energy that when attached to a Metal Pokemon, says this Metal Pokemon has no weakness. And I know we've got Weakness Guard Energy, but Weakness Guard Energy will not satisfy the fully steel or metal requirements of Zashium V's attack. And it's going to rotate out in a year. So make no mistake about it. This is a really good card that you should expect to see Metal Dex playing in the not too distant future. In at number 10, we've got B. Now, B is my favorite of the gym leaders from Sword and Shield. I've not been shy expressing that opinion. But I also love fighting decks and B is there for your fighting decks. What you do is you discard the top five cards of your deck and any energy you find there you can attach to your bench fighting Pokemon in any way that you like. But this isn't just basic energy, so twin energy or stone fighting energy that reduces damage done to your fighting Pokemon by 20, those will be accelerated here as well. Then of course we remember that there's Pokemon like Excadrill that really sometimes want to get very low in the deck to do more damage, and you've got things like Machamp that does more damage for each fighting Pokemon in your discard pile, and yeah, sure, you've got great energy acceleration here, but you've also got really nice tricks to help other Pokemon in your deck, and that's kind of awesome. In a number nine, we got my personal picks for best card in the set. We've got Fampy and Don Fam. Now, Fampy's got a ridiculous attack that just does 30 damage for each damage counter on Fampy. And obviously, there's all kinds of tricks you can use. Caper Toughness to give you an extra 50 HP. And then use stuff like Spike Muff to switch in and out the active to drop damage on you. Things of that will work rather nicely indeed. But then, you've also got Donphan. Now, Donphan's actually got a really nice attack. Single energy, 120. Same as we see on Excadrill, and Excadrill's good. But it also does 20 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. But your bench Pokemon should be Fampy. So you're good. And then, of course, we've got that Memory Capsule card. It's just Memory Energy as a tool. We'll get to that card later. In this set that allows Don Fan to copy the attack of Fampy, and you've got what could potentially be a real powerhouse, plus 150 on a stage 1. We see kind of stage 2s with that amount of HP. I am a huge, huge fan of this pair. I don't necessarily think you even need Don Fan. I think Fampy will work nicely without Don Fan. I mean, Spiritomb didn't have an evolution, and that went alright. 
but I do think having Don Fan is a rather large bonus. In at number 8, we've got my second favourite lot of cards from the set. And there are three here, but we can't really separate them. So you've got Aracuda here, which has got an attack for a single colourless energy that lets you search your deck for two Aracuda and put them on the bench. And that does not sound like the kind of card which would be this high in a top 10 for a set. And usually it wouldn't be. But you see, Cramorant's got an attack for two colorless energy, and bearing in mind twin energy will work just fine, that does 60 damage for each Aracuda that you discard off of your bench. So you get four Aracuda on your bench, discard them all, boom, 240 damage for one energy attachment on a single prize Pokemon. That's ridiculous. And then Aracuda evolves into Barascuda, who's literally just got the same attack as Esper. And I know Esper's a basic, but the free energy kind of killed it. Whereas Barascuda is a single energy attack. It trebles the amount of damage on one of your opponent's Pokemon. It's ridiculous, and I love it. And I do think that we're going to be seeing a lot of these free cards. These are the kind of cards that even if they don't make the meta, they are a rogue deck builder's dream. In at number 7, we've got Aegis Slash V. Now, there is actually a VMAX here, but I don't know if I even want to include the VMAX on this list. Because it really is the V that makes me so happy here. It's got an attack for free energy that does 130 damage, but is not affected by any effects on the defending Pokemon. Which means that you can go through stuff like Decidueye and things like Obstagoon, etc. Which some decks really, really need. And of course, don't forget that you can VMAX and then use Memory Capsule to, you know, use Aegis Slash's attack. Now, to be fair, the VMAX for free energy does 160 plus 30 more for each prize card you've taken. It is a nice late game sweeper and it's one that you may well play with the V. But the V giving Metal Decks an option to go through anything that might be trying to block you really is very cool. In at number six, we've got a lovely new tool, Longview Scope. Now, Longview Scope is a tool that says that any attacks that hit the bench do 30 more damage to Pokemon GX and V. So, I mentioned Cramorant earlier that does 160 to the bench. Well, with this, it does 190 to a GX or V, which is huge. Because Dedene's got 160, you'll get the KO. But Crobat's got 180, and a lot of people are now swapping Dedenne for Crobat, and you will end up just a little bit short, and you will whiff the KO. Unless you've got this. Something like Salamence V, which does 30 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon, now does 60 damage to any that are GXs and Vs. You see where we're going here? If you're playing any Pokemon that hit the bench, this is an absolute must play. Now, coming in at number five, the one card on this list that I'm worried that I have gone and overrated, but it's too late now, and it is a good card, it is Leon. Leon is a supporter card that just says your attacks this turn do an extra 30 damage. And I know that for some people this is a very underwhelming card, but one of my big old adages in the Pokemon TCG is that extra damage is always good. This is an extra 30 damage. This is the kind of thing whereby you're not expecting it and all of a sudden your opponent goes and gets a KO that they weren't expecting and that you well they probably were they knew Leon was in the deck but you probably weren't expecting and that's kind of the difference here I think this is a kind of card which is going to legitimately swing games it is a kind of card that is actually going to make losses into wins and wins into losses and i think that's pretty huge and that's why i put it so high on the list in at number four we've got the aforementioned memory capsule it's memory energy as a tool it's i'm gonna be honest with you it's memory berry it's literally just the old memory berry card which was a tool that let you use the attacks of your previous evolutions it's kind of cool and We've seen this before. We've seen Shrine of Memory see play. We saw Memory Berry see play. We've seen these cards see play in the past. And if this card doesn't end up seeing play, it's not because it's a bad card. 
It's because we never got Pokemon whose pre-evolutions were quite good enough. Although, let's be perfectly clear here, I've already given you Don Fan and Eater Slash V Max, and that is just from Pokemon on this list. This is another card that might not end up seeing play in as many decks as you might expect, but will end up being cheekily teched into decks and making a huge difference. Now, in at number three, and I do think there is a big difference. I think the top three are the top three. I think there's a big line being drawn here. And I'm putting Flame at number three, but if you put it at number one, I don't know how offended I would be. You see, Talonflame is probably the best turn one Pokemon we've got in the game. For a single colorless energy, you've got Dedenne's ability. You discard your hand, draw six. The difference is... You can use it turn one going first. So if you go first, turn one, you get to discard your hand and draw six cards. That is a ridiculous amount of consistency. Wonderful. What if you go second? Well, you are a fire Pokemon. So you can use Welder. That attaches two energy. Then you attach from your hand. Oh, look, 160 damage. And you have to discard an energy, but nobody really cares. So if you go first you get an extra consistency, and if you go second, you can do 160 turn one fairly easily, and stuff like Zashin is legitimately getting KO'd by this. Dedene is getting KO'd by this. I think this is a really, really good turn one Pokemon, and even if other colors don't play it, other typings don't play it for the first attack, I can't imagine playing a fire deck and not playing one of these cards. It just seems too good. In at number two, we've got Sir Chester Bass. Now, this is a card that some people are fairly unhappy about, and I kind of understand why. Because what it does is it reduces damage done to all basic Pokemon in play by 20. But you see, basic Pokemon are already the good ones. Basic Pokemon are already the ones that don't need much extra help. This will give ADP extra damage reduction and it will give Zacian extra damage reduction it's it's helping out all those basic pokemon that are too gosh darn good to begin with but i tell you what it really does help them out and the fact of the matter is you can argue till the end of the day the end of the week however long you want as to whether this is a good card and should have been printed or not None of that really matters. The only thing that really matters here is that it has been printed, and I don't see any scenario in which this doesn't see a huge amount of play. Again, if you put this number one on your top ten list, there will be no argument from me. But I'm giving number one to Snorlax, and I do think this is a weird set. I don't think there is an out-and-out -out number one card. I think we've got three cards, any of which are deserving of the number one spot, but none of them are inarguably deserving of the number one spot. Maybe I just love that big sleepy bear, or maybe it just is that good. You see, what it does, is it's got an ability that once during your turn, if this Pokemon is active, you can draw two, you've got seven cards in hand, and your turn ends. It is literally an ability version of Tropical Beach. Draw two, you've got seven cards in your hand, and your turn ends. Well, Tropical Beach was amazing for setup Pokemon. Why would this not be amazing for setup Pokemon? Essentially, one of two things is going to happen when we look at Snorlax. Either you've got something you really want to do turn one, or use Snorlax. And bearing in mind, if you go first, you can't attack. So you're going to be ending your turn without attacking. So going first turn one, this is awesome. Any deck that's playing a bunch of switching cards and scoop up that and all of that stuff, along with... Quick ball to search basics, which is basically everyone, needs to think long and hard about popping this card into their deck because honestly, this is ridiculous consistency. I'm not loving the attack, four energy, 100 damage paralysis on a coin flip, meh, but the first attack I think is phenomenal. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, those are your top 10 cards from Astonishing Volt Tackle. A pretty gosh darn good set. I was. Well, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't too impressed with the previous set. I found the top 10 list to be kind of jamming cards in. This set, I was desperately trying to cut it down to a top 10. And even then, as you saw, I kind of failed. I like this set, and I think there are some proper game-changing cards here. 
But I'd like to know what you think. And of course, I'd love a proper top 10. That would be awesome. So go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would you thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio